Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video looks at the install process for the high voltage upgrade kit for the BBSHD motor. For people that are not aware, this allows you to take probably the most proven and reliable mid-drive motor on the market up here and triple its power and performance. So we're going to go over the kit and the install and you can see why we make the best thing on the market for this motor. I'm going to be timestamping this whole video, so if you look at the description, you can jump about to particular parts when you're doing your own install. And if you're using some other place's kit, then I'm sure this video is going to help you as well. The central part of this kit is the ASI Back855 controller. It's very compact, but it's also capable of delivering up to 5000 watts. It's fully potted, and as long as you follow best practice with the JST connector at the back here, it's very reliable. I'm going to be going over some tips with how you can do this during the install. The red and black wires at the back here are for your battery connector. Usually we use an XT90, but in the case of mine here, I'm using a QS connector. That's one of the advantages with our kit is that we are able to make changes like this depending on different people's requirements. The motor phase wires here come to this plug, which you can't get the wrong way around, and they're in the yellow, green and blue. This piece here is the main harness connector and this plugs into the JST connector on the back 855. We spent a lot of time improving this connector and it's way, way better than the bundles of heat shrink you get with a lot of the other kits out there. This plug here is the one that runs up to the front of the bike and this lets you plug in things like the display, brake cutoffs and throttle. We switched to this style of plug because it's much easier to connect than the standard Bafang one. The pins are strong and it's pretty much impossible to plug this in the wrong way. On the other end, you have the connectors that go to your PAS and your hall sensors. And the last piece on this is the temperature probe. And this allows us to have thermal monitoring and thermal rollback, which protects your motor and stops it from getting too hot. This cable here is the one that runs up to the front of the bike and this allows you to plug in your display, which is the green, and then you have your throttle connection, a brake cutoff, and also a power cycle switch. This bundle of three is for your phase wire connections and we can send these with them already crimped on or we can send them with them crimped off. And this plugs into the back 855 there and you can't really get that one wrong because it only plugs in the one way. The last parts you get with your kit are um, a power switch here and the display and in this case I'm using the, the Egg Rider uh, but you can also use a 750C type display if you want to. Usually you supply your own throttle which is the Bafang one um, but we can supply these and we can also supply uh, the Magura type ones pre-wired and ready to work with this kit. So these are all the parts here and I'm going to go over the install process for this. Every bike is gonna be a little bit different, but the main principles are gonna be the same. As this is a fresh motor rebuild, I'm not gonna be doing any of the sort of really intricate waterproofing stuff at this stage. It's pretty good as it is just installing it, but if you do ride in the wet a lot and in the winter like I do, there are some extra steps that it's kind of good to go through, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video. So right now on this bike, I have removed all of the drivetrain, so it's gonna be really nice and easy for you to see what's going on, hopefully. So the first part of the install is I'm gonna be getting all the connections made to the motor and getting the cover on, and that's gonna allow me to route the wires neatly. I prefer to do it this way around because then you can get all the wires tucked exactly where you want them to go, and it's a lot easier to do that than, say, installing the controller first. So this white one here with a latching mechanism, this goes into the hall sensor plug, which is down here. And you need to make sure this latching mechanism is facing towards the inside of the motor. And there's a couple of little notches to line it up properly. And that simply clicks in there. This is the, the PAS connector. And there's a latching mechanism on this as well. So you just need to make sure that they are lined up the right way. And then that plugs in correctly like so. And then we can just tuck that out there for the meantime. The next part is to get the phase wires in. And it's very, very simple. Uh, you just go their shape to fit and you just get green to green.
and then you go blue to blue. And then we go yellow to yellow. And we like to use these nice jacketed connectors um, to get a really nice contact. And then the next phase with this is just to get everything kind of moved about and tucked in so that everything fits in with the cover. And it's a little bit of a juggling act in order to get it there. And you'll notice with this as well, um, there's a gasket that's going to be pre-wired and you need to get that in the right position to then fit at the side. So I'm going to need to adjust the position of these wires so I get a nice loop. Um, I'm going to set this all up and then I'll show you the part of getting the cover on. So you can see here, I've just done it by hand is I've adjusted the wires so that they fit nicely within the sort of kidney shape of this controller. And I've adjusted this gasket back to where I think it's going to fit nicely with the cover and then everything should fit really, really well. So I'll get this into the cover now. And this piece, it just slots in the notch at the back of the cover here. So you literally just press that in there and that goes on there. And then you also then have to position the rest of these wires, which takes the, the other connectors and tuck it in the bottom there. And it's a little bit tricky to get everything lined up, um, but I will do my best to, to get that done for you. It's probably the hardest part of the whole install is to get all of this wired away neatly. So I should say again, before you do this, you need to make sure any gasket that you're using here is in place before you put this cover and before you put this clip in, because otherwise you won't be able to get it on afterwards. So when you're doing this, kind of a neat trick is to kind of like feed this in, feed these wires into the case as you put it on, and that should keep them tucked away nicely. And another trick is probably have your M4 bolts already pre in the case, and then you're all ready to go. And then the last part is to make sure that this wire here is in the slot there um, and not to not to pinch it anywhere but you won't be able to get the cover on if you do that so there we go so that wasn't too bad at all so i'm going to get this cover secured on now and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step So with these bolts, you don't need to go super, super tight because you'll run into a bit of a risk of cracking the case. So don't go crazy with it. It's not indestructible. So just go till it's firm and then a quarter twist. And that's done. So this wire here is for the temperature thermistor, which allows us to monitor the heat and also roll back if the temperature is getting too hot on the motor. And so what you need to do is feed it through the bottom of the motor here. And then you need to remove one of these M4 bolts here and secure it against the motor housing and then tighten it down. And then you can cover it up as well with um, a bit of tape or something like that and that's going to help it keep it out of the wind and give you a slightly more stable temperature reading but everything's been calibrated quite carefully to pull the temperature from the outside rather than on the inside so it's still an effective way of monitoring temperature so this is what the temperature sensor looks like once it's been completely installed and all i'm going to do is use a piece of gorilla tape and put that over the top and that's going to keep the wind off that. So that's with the tape in place and because it's black it fits nicely with the motor and it's very strong stuff this sticks really really well but I can still remove it and get access to it if I need to do so. So for the next part I'm going to get the back 855 connected and this is probably one of the most important steps here and that's to use um, some dielectric grease around the outside of this connector.
Yeah, you're not going to do much good with it over the end, um, but around the sides of it, it's going to form basically a bit of a seal around the edge of this connector. And it just helps to give you an extra bit of security just in case you get any moisture come in here. It can't then get inside of these pins. So once that's done, uh, you need to plug it in and the catch mechanism goes to the top of the back. So you sort of have the, the shaping to the one side and then it just literally slots in and you should hear it click once it's in. And then the next part is to plug in the phase wires and you just match the colors. So now I've got that in position, I'm gonna work out where I wanna put the rest of my bundle of wires so that you get things like the speed sensor cable going in the right place as well. So based on a quick measure, I'm gonna be putting my back 855 here with the mounting system. What I might do with this bike in the future is um, change some of the cable lengths a little bit because I have got quite a bit of excess at the back here. So I'm probably gonna change the, the phase wire length, but I'll probably do that when I do the, the final winter waterproofing video. So the back 855 controller cover here case, um, you just slot in the back here and you'll see that the plug is shaped to fit this at the back here and there's also a shelf. And the reason for that is to provide a lot of stability for this plug and connector because what can happen is with the bundles of heat shrink, they can flex up and down and that can put a lot of stress on the JST connector. And I think a lot of the failures that people were having was because of that stress on the connector. So we designed that specifically to take care of that. So we also made it much, much narrower at the back. So if you did want to go the ultimate and use silicone to fill in any of the gaps, it's quite easy to do that. So it basically uses two M5s on the back there or on the side and they hold everything in place. And you don't need to go nuts with these. Um, like you can do them tight, but you don't wanna to go too tight because you'll crack the casing. So just go nice and firm, but not too much. And we've never had a problem with any of these coming out. So the next step is to get this in the right position on the bike and you use zip ties to do that. So I'm just gonna use two at the moment. One, there are four points, so I'm just gonna use two and that's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room to adjust this to its final position. There we go. So the next stage is a bit personal to each build, but it's a case of tidying up the cables. I have actually got quite a bit of slack on this one, which I'll be taking care of at a later date. Um, but for now, I'm going to have everything bundled up nicely, use some pretty beefy zip ties to keep everything held in position there. And you have the speed sensor that goes to the back. I'm not actually going to be using the speed sensor with this build. Um, I'm going to be having a map um, that pulls the speed directly off the hall sensor because this is going to be a single speed build. If you're using a build with, with gearing um, where you're shifting around, you'll need to use the speed sensor in order to get an accurate speed reading on the bike. So I'm going to get all these tidied up. Uh, I'm not going to show you every last bit of this um, because I say everyone's different, um, but you've got to get the speed sensor to the back. If you're doing that, you need to get this all cinched up and tucked away. Um, the battery is going to go straight through to a triangle bag. So I'll be keeping that free to route through to that. And then you need to take the, the front harness wire up so you can run everything down to the front of the bike there. So I will get that done and then I'll show you the results after that. So with this build, in order to keep as minimum as possible wiring on the outside of the bike, I'm gonna be actually utilizing my frame bag to hold most of the excess harness wire because there is quite a bit on this because it's quite a compact frame. So what I've done is I'm running the, the harness wire that runs to the front of the bike for like the display, throttle, that sort of thing. That's gonna go through the frame bag. Any excess will be stored in the frame bag. And then I'm gonna be able to have as little as possible on the front. Uh, I've also got the wiring um, plug for the battery and that goes into that as well. And that'll let me keep everything completely zipped up. Um, this is like a Moosetrex bag. So this is 
pretty well waterproofed. Um, down the road, I'll probably get another Rogoff bag made for this frame because it's going to give me a few more custom options. Um, so the wiring is tidied away uh, as best as possible. And down the road, I'm going to get some sleeves and things to, to tidy this up further. Um, so you don't actually see any of the colors. You just see, you just see a nice black finish. Um, but that's it for now. Um, I'm going to get this tidied away and then I'll show you how all the stuff goes on the front of the bike. So what I find is it's best to get everything off the bars to start with, and then you can thread everything on. You can get it lined up in the right position and then you can remove stuff and tighten stuff down in sequence, basically. So the egg rider, I have it goes on the inside and then you can use your power switch. And if you invert it, it actually slots really quite nicely underneath the egg rider there. Another thing you can do with this is not have it on at all. And you can have it kind of hidden away somewhere else, maybe in the bag so that, you know, if someone was to grab the bike really quick, they wouldn't have access to that power switch and maybe it might save it from, from getting nicked. But anyway, you get those on and then you get your brake lever on and then you get the throttle on and then you get the stubby part of the handle because I'm using a half twist. So once everything's on and lined up, you've got the, the end here, you've got the throttle, you've got the brake, you've got the switch and you've got the egg rider. Uh, you need to mark the position for the egg rider and then take the other stuff off so you'll be able to get in properly with your Allen key and tighten it up. And then you just work through in sequence and then we'll go through and get the cables tidied so it, it takes it around. The only thing I'm not gonna be able to do on this video um, is the, the brake cutoff um, for the Magura here because it's a slightly different one to the Pafang and the little adapter that I ordered to work with it hasn't arrived yet. So I'm gonna do a separate video on that anyway because there is a nice little hack that you can do if you don't wanna buy an adapter piece um, to make the Magura fit with the Bafang connector. Now, a lot of people get kind of nervous with these connectors. I guess I still do <laughs> a little bit. But the thing to note with them is there's a little notch and there's an arrow. And if you line the notch up and you line the arrow up, they should go in and snap together fine. So I'll put a diagram up on the screen showing that. Um, but you basically hook these up. So one goes to the throttle, one goes to the display, which is the green one. The red one goes to the power switch. And right at the moment, my brake cutoff one won't be used. Um, but when I get the adapter, I'll, I'll do a video explaining how the, the brake cutoff and everything works as well. So I'm gonna get those all hooked up and then show how I'm gonna zip tie everything to make it as, as tidy as possible. Another neat trick to keep things uh, as neat as possible is to use this cable wrap stuff. And that means that where I've had to, to bundle up a little bit of cable to make it fit, um, you're not going to be seeing stuff stuck out everywhere. So the final part of this is to get the battery in and get the main harness wider tucked away. And then once that's done, I'll be able to show you the, uh, the finished job. But these are all the controls. Like I say, I have everything on the front here on my bike. Um, I keep it all on, on the left-hand side. But uh, there's no reason why uh, you can't use a right twist throttle if you want to. Um, you can put the display in the middle. There's, there's all sorts of creative stuff that, that you can do with these things. Um, this is just one particular bike. So that's it for the basic kit install. Once I've given this bike a period of testing, I'll be going over some of the extra waterproofing steps you can do with the controller mount and the motor cover, things like that. There'll also be some videos on setting up the egg rider display as well as using the high voltage app. If you have any questions about any of this, you can post them in the comments. You can also get lots of further build support via our Discord channel. Don't forget that you can also use the timestamps to jump about to different parts of this video if you only need to watch like one particular section. If you made it this far, a huge thanks for watching and a shout out to all the channel members who make all this possible. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.